Hi everyone, my name is Jet and I'm going to show you how to decorate your binder with duct tape. All of these decorating methods are designed for beginners. That means there is no intricate cutting. In fact, you will not need any specific tools other than a roll of duct tape and maybe a pair of scissors. An exacto knife and cutting board might come in handy but are by no means required. I recommend using absolutely plain binders, but if you get the binders that have the little plastic insert for paper, you want to remove those. To do this, just run an X-Acto knife along the spine of the binder or just try tearing it on its own and the rest should easily tear away. So the first technique that I want to show you guys, I like to call the duct tape addict. This is for a person who already owns lots of duct tape, probably one roll of several different patterns that you like. For this, all that you have to do is cut random length strips of duct tape. I like to vary them between two to six inches depending on what you need and place them randomly on your binder. My technique is I start at the upper corner and and work my way down. Be sure to overlap them randomly and at the end you can fill in the gaps with small pieces. Notice that I like to lay some of them horizontally, some of them vertically, and then random ones that are laid out a diagonal pattern. If you'd like you could even cut some pieces of duct tape thinner by tearing it down the middle and creating several one inch strips. What ultimately you want to accomplish with this technique is to make a perfectly random collage of duct tape. The next few techniques that I'm going to show you are all variations on stripes. A stripe pattern is very simply created with duct tape just because duct tape comes in long strips. So hopefully this will give you a few ideas on how you can use stripes on your binder. Right here I'm doing the simplest version of stripes, which is just creating horizontal strips of duct tape and placing them on the binder. When you cut them with your scissors, if it's just a little too long, you can wrap it around the edge of the binder. So here's a couple variations on that theme. You could create thinner strips of duct tape by placing the strip of duct tape on a cutting board and cutting it directly down the middle with a ruler and X-Acto knife. You could also place the duct tape vertically on the binder. I might also point out that stripes look great if you have two colors of duct tape, but you can also do it with an entire rainbow of colors. A technique slightly more complicated than the stripes is a brick pattern. To create the brick pattern, I cut out a lot of four inch strips of duct tape, but you could sort of eyeball that, make them a little longer or a little shorter. Four inches worked really great for me because at the end of the binder, you'll need two inch strips of duct tape. Alternate with whether you start with the four inch strips or the two inch strips, and that'll create the brick effect. I'd also point out that this looks especially great if you use a white binder or a black binder and red duct tape, but you could also use brown duct tape or whatever you'd like to create a different look. Here's a simple technique that starts off with you covering your binder in all one color. Once you have that done, we're going to add a letter to it. This can be the first letter of your name or your last name, or this could be the first letter in the subject that you're using this binder for, such as M for math or E for English. To make this easier, I would recommend cutting out the letter in its simplest form. If you think about it, all letters can be broken down into a more boxy shape, eliminating any possible curves. Making the letters boxy not only creates a really cool looking graphic, but it's also very, very fast to cut with duct tape. The last technique I'm going to show you is the most complex and also requires a little bit of planning. It is collage style. This can be done with pictures printed up on the computer, maybe from your Instagram photos, or just random pictures of things that you like. Or you could even use candy wrappers or any paper products at all. For this, you could either glue the products down onto the binder in whatever organization you'd like, or you can tape it down like I did here. 
taping really is only going to work if you're using square or rectangular photos. The possibilities with this really are endless, but whenever you have everything arranged on your binder the way you'd like, all that you have to do is tape it down with clear tape. Just take one strip at a time and lay it carefully onto the binder and then repeat until you have the entire binder covered. The last step after you've used any of these techniques to decorate your binder is to seal the edges. There's two ways to do this. One involves an exacto knife and cutting board and the other one doesn't. The first technique using those extra materials is to cut a strip of duct tape the length of your binder and also the width of your binder. Each of those you're going to want to cut in half down the middle. The other technique is to cut two of each, two strips of duct tape the length of your binder and two strips of duct tape the width. When placing the strips of duct tape on the edges of your binder, place it so that half of the duct tape hangs over the edge and then just fold. Keep in mind when doing the outer edge of your binder that a lot of binders on the inside have that little pocket where you can put papers. So there you're going to want to snip with your scissors right where that section would start. That will make it so that you can still open that pocket. Also remember to snip the corners of the duct tape before you fold to give it a nicer edge. Have fun decorating your binder with duct tape and please leave a comment, like this video, and subscribe for more tutorials.